At Guitar by Masters, we understand the importance of correct practice. That's why we use our patented interactive platform, PracticePal, to give you a unique opportunity to improve your guitar playing. Are you starting to learn the guitar, trying to improve your skills, or interested in learning new pieces? Guitar by Masters lets you do all that with some of the greatest guitarists, teachers, and composers of our time. Access an expanding library of tutorials for different guitar styles and levels, which come with interactive scores, detailed views of both hands, tips and comments from teachers available in multiple languages, virtual call and response settings, and other useful features to make your practice sessions more efficient and enjoyable. Learning from the masters has never been easier. Start your free trial today at guitarbymasters.com. Welcome to Guitar by Masters podcast. I'm your host, Carmen Stindler, and in this podcast, we'll be delving into numerous guitar topics, as well as having conversations with world's most renowned classical guitarists. Today's episode will be my very first solo episode, and it is all about effective practice. During our music education, I feel we don't get enough information on how to practice really effectively. This doesn't make a lot of sense, since most of the time with our instrument is spent in a practice room by ourselves learning new pieces and trying to improve our playing. In the fast-paced world we live in, being efficient is more important than ever, and that applies to practice as well. So after having practiced for 20 plus years of my life, I wanted to share with you five tips for effective practice that can be useful for professional as well as hobby guitarists. So first things first, do not underestimate preparation. By preparation, I don't only mean warm up, which is by the way also very important, it all actually starts with the right setup. Try to create an inspiring atmosphere and most of all, practice somewhere you feel comfortable at and where there's no distractions so you can really focus. I like to activate airplane mode on my phone because any messages or phone calls can wait an hour or two. Always start with a short warm up. Whether you have a standard warm up routine or you play different warm up exercises every time, try not to make it too automatic. I find this time very important to take note of how I feel. Are my shoulders and neck tense? How am I breathing? Am I grounded? These are things that are sometimes hard to think of when practicing concrete pieces and focusing on so many things at the same time, but they're perfect to contemplate during your warm up. I personally don't have a warm up routine that is set in stone. It all depends on the mood I am in that day and most of all on what pieces I'm playing in that practice session. But of course, you don't have to be as spontaneous. Maybe a more structured warm up routine is better for you. When building a warm up routine, don't forget the five cornerstones of guitar technique scales, arpeggios, slurs, tremolo, and coordination. For some extra inspiration, I suggest you check out the three part series Mastering Guitar Technique by the world renowned guitarist Denis Azabagic, exclusively on Guitar by Masters. The second very important tip is to structure your practice and divide pieces into smaller sections. Playing a piece through over and over again is not practice. It's only repeating the same mistakes over and over again and cementing them. So this is actually counterproductive. You are better than that and your time and energy are valuable. So try to structure your practice based on the goals you want to achieve. For example, Spend the first 15 minutes trying to figure out the best left hand fingerings for a specific section and then spend the next 15 minutes focusing on articulation and dynamics, again, only for that specific section. Sections can, by the way, be as small as one bar and I wouldn't do bigger sections than eight bars at most, especially at the beginning. I like to divide pieces into smaller sections based on phrasing. I think this just makes the most musical sense and don't forget to always practice transitions. So for example, if you're working on a four bar section, don't forget to play the beginning of the fifth bar as well. Dividing a piece into sections also helps you memorize it much faster. 
The third tip I have for you today is maybe the most important. Define your goals and be consistent. What is most important to you in your guitar playing? Do you have any specific deadlines like an upcoming performance, a masterclass or just a lesson with your teacher? Define your goals and focus on what's most important to you. In practice, it's all about quality, not quantity. If you know exactly what your goals are, you can achieve them much faster. Stay realistic though, especially if you are not a professional musician and guitar playing is not your top priority in life. Small and realistic goals are easily attainable. And once you achieve them, you'll be much more motivated to set more goals and improve very consistently. Try to practice every day, even if some days this means you only practice five minutes. Consistency really is the key here. Just having your guitar out on a guitar stand can do wonders. It will remind you to pick it up and play. Having goals is the key to improvement. I like to set monthly, weekly and daily goals in my practice. My monthly practice goals are of course quite overwhelming in comparison to my daily practice goals and my weekly goals are something in between. Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. If you're just starting with setting your practice goals, try to keep it simple and realistic. It's much better to exceed your goals than beat yourself up for not achieving absolutely everything you set your mind to. Setting a goal of, for example, writing down fingerings for both hands, learning a fast piece in tempo and learning it by heart in one week is not a realistic goal to have and will only stress you out, which is not why you play guitar in the first place. So start slow, be kind to yourself and enjoy your consistent improvement. If you are not sure what your goal should be, I suggest you talk to your teacher about it. If you don't have a teacher, Guitar by Masters has you covered. In the hundreds of tutorials for all levels, the teachers help you set goals and tell you exactly what you need to do to achieve them. Practice Pal, with all its features, can also be of great help to you. The fourth tip I'd like to share with you is mental practice. This basically means improving as a guitarist without a guitar in your hands. Visualizing yourself playing a specific piece can help you a lot with memorizing the piece well. The movements our hands do while playing a certain piece become automatic very quickly. And it's something completely different to try to play the piece only in your mind. If you've never done this before, I would suggest you start very slow and with pieces you can play very well already. Spending time listening to great artists and recordings will also help you immensely in developing your musical taste and just widening your horizons. I really like to follow the score, listening to the greatest pianists and orchestras of our time. Recently, I've been listening a lot to Christian Zimmermann's recordings of Schubert, which is heavily influencing my interpretation of the pieces I currently have in my program. So find what you enjoy most and what inspires you the most. It's also always extremely helpful to analyze the structure of pieces you're playing, trying to find harmonic patterns, melody lines and different voices, just basically trying to understand the thought process of the composer while they were writing the piece. There's also a lot you can read about interpretation, ornamentation, any musical parameter for that matter, and I would strongly advise you do that. You will not regret it. And the last tip that might be my favorite one Record your playing and learn from it. Listening to yourself play while you play is something completely different than how an audience perceives your playing. Recording yourself puts you in the shoes of an audience and I think you'll be surprised at what you hear and how different it is from what you expect. You don't need any fancy recording equipment to do this. Your phone is more than enough, by the way. In my experience, the fastest progress by far can be made when you really learn to listen to your recordings. This will ensure two very important things. First of all, you'll be able to pinpoint what exactly still needs more work. How is your sound quality, your phrasing? Is the rhythm you play always accurate? Are all the voices in balance? Are you using enough colors? 
how's your rubato? Is there too much, too little rubato? Or is it just perfect already? How is your dynamic range? Are you maybe breathing very loud while you play? Or you can hear, or even see in case you film yourself, any other obvious tension? Once you define these problems, you can start working on them and eventually solve them. The other reason why I think recording yourself is very important is, in a way, the opposite. I'm sure you remember a performance of yours when you felt you made a lot of mistakes and your playing just didn't sound as good as it did in the practice room, but after the performance, people congratulated you and told you they enjoyed it a lot. This happens because we tend to be very critical of ourselves. We focus on the tiniest mistakes and dwell on them far longer than any audience member ever would. Listening to your own recordings and just being in the shoes of your audience can give you the necessary distance, a better perspective, and consequently boost your confidence. So that concludes my five tips for effective practice. I hope you enjoyed my first solo episode ever. Uh, Thank you for taking your time and joining me today. Our next episode will be released very soon. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss it. I hope you have a lovely week and talk to you soon.